Welcome to USA Global TV and Radio, where our mission is to provide education, entertainment, hope, and inspiration. USA Global TV and Radio connects you with experts and audiences all around the world every single day to help you succeed in business and to live a richer life. Visit us at usaglobaltv.com to learn about career and life-changing training and mentoring programs like The Listening Mentor. Subscribe to our newsletter to stay informed about our special programs and offers. Discover how you can become a guest on one of our shows or a host or producer of a USA Global TV and radio show of your very own. That's USA Global TV and radio, where the doctor is always in. Hello, everyone. Welcome home to USA Global TV and Radio, where we provide world-class education, entertainment, hope, and inspiration. I'm Dr. Jacqueline Kerbeck, and I want to welcome you to another episode of The Hot Topic Show. Welcome to all of our loyal viewers and listeners on all the platforms around the world, and welcome to our new viewers on Roku Worldwide, as well as Amazon Fire. Let's get started with our our show today. We have a very special guest who is joining us from the UK, and we haven't seen this guest in a couple of years, I'm going to say, but I could be wrong. We'll find out. It's Ambassador Dr. Jamie Long. Jamie is a featured, published, award-winning actor, model, singer, and owner of Eloni, and signed to K-Dragon Records and Terra Libra. Welcome to the program, Jamie. Hello. Wow. Hello. Thank you. It's so nice to see you again after it has been two years. It has been. Okay. Two, That's... Yeah. I worked it out early. It was two years last time um, because I think it, Dr. Melanie Chan was with us as well. Yes, she was. And hello to Dr. Chan. And thank you so much for the introduction. So you've gone through a lot in your life and you've accomplished a lot in your life. And yeah. sometimes those things really do go hand in hand because many times when we're at our lowest point, when we have adversity, that's when we become really, truly awesome. So I'd love for you to share a little bit of your backstory about how you got involved in all these creative venues. Yeah, sure. Um, growing up as a kid, um, I was abused by uh, my parents. At uh, 15, I ended up living on the streets for a couple of years. Um, I then met my eldest children's mum, and then I joined the military. So I joined the British Army. Um, I suffered bullying in the military. I was also a victim of domestic abuse and violence um, whilst married. <laughs> And then I left the army, um, but I'm also um, a victim of rape um, and I suffer with a lot of mental health. So CPTSD, severe social anxiety, 
um loads of others and i was depressed and i still get like that i'm not 100 percent um but i thought i can either let this swallow me up or i can do something about it so i ended up doing something about it um i went uni i got degrees um and then i became a singer songwriter an actor model and then i was part of a group called lonely ladies Vol nations international where the um the ceo is um dr caroline makaka um she appointed me as chairperson for men's rights um and i was in the philippines and i was like i nearly didn't turn up because of my anxiety my mental health and i met a beautiful amazing wonderful woman is um lady ambassador dr robbie motter and she taught me she goes the key word is show up and i thought okay so i showed up um i did my speech about how i've overcome it all how i try helping people um and then i set up a program called Yuloni, so Young Lives All Nations International, which is using my experiences of mental health, domestic abuse, um, sexual assault, all that sort of stuff. Um, I kind of thought I need to start helping these people. And it transpired from being in the Philippines, which is why I set this project up now. Um, and since doing this project for the last couple of years, since we last spoke, um, I've won so many awards now i've received honorary doctorate degrees um from around the world i go to places i couldn't imagine that i'd go to all my life being told you won't achieve anything um you you're a nobody and to know that going from the streets to where i am now with a beautiful wife amazing family kids um my accomplishments and my jobs is proof that you can overcome many many obstacles and achieve to be the best person you can be whilst helping others thank you jamie that is really tremendous and i just applaud you for that i also want to ask you a question because i've heard this from people before i felt it myself sometimes we overcome horrific things and we have all these accomplishments and awards and we feel we don't deserve it we get this imposter syndrome sometimes have you ever felt that way I do all the time. Um, I I think to myself, and I said to my wife, I don't know why I deserve them. Um, you know, in like three years, I've received something like 25 different awards. Um, and I'm like, I don't deserve them. What have I really done? Um, and she's like, you're being silly. You do deserve it. You've worked hard to get where you've got to, and you're turning your negative into a positive. And by no means at all, I'm totally better. I still have my bad days. Um, the mental health um, is permanently with me. Um, but that's why I've, I'm doing these talks, encouraging people to speak out about like the rape, the sexual abuse, domestic violence. Um, one in four men um, currently are victims of some form of sexual assault um in the uk so i'm on a mission to encourage men to speak out about it all that's a staggering number and i'm really glad that you're here today we just had a show about women's empowerment and yet at the same time i know from uh, roland friedel who's one of our team members here many times men are not able to express themselves because we've had a society where you have to be strong and tough and yeah. you can't share your feelings and so you're working with people who are going to share their feelings about things that are truly traumatic and there's a lot of judgment in this world what do you share with them about being able to talk about what happened to them as not being it happened to them it's not them yeah well um i've bottled everything up for a very long time you know as i said um when i was suffering with domestic abuse and violence i was in the army um and being in the military is not the sort of thing you'd talk about you know it wasn't manly enough and all through life you get told oh, it's not man and manly to talk about your problems your mental health and i bottled everything up you know i had a son that passed away i bottled all that up um living the streets all the traumatic stuff i saw um all my childhood trauma and i just bottled everything every, everything up and then when i was working with the ambulance service my team leader noticed that i was starting to crack up the seams and hold me to get help and 
that was the best thing I've done is getting the help now. Um, and I still have the help and it is a long process. And as I said, I'll never get better from it, but it actually helps talking about it. And the way I look at it now, if nobody wants to know me because they think I'm a pansy as we get called or, oh, you're not man enough. Do you know what? That's their problem, not mine. You know, I've survived what I've survived and I'm now helping other people, encouraging them. And I've currently helped from around the world, 25 people in the last year um, where they've personally messaged me and faked me because they've managed to speak out. And I've got a lot of support from women as well um, for encouraging men and speaking out about my problems. And I'd rather me suffer the abuse than everybody else whilst I'm pushing these campaigns. Bravo. That's brilliant. I really applaud you for that. I'm wondering, as you're helping these 25 people and as people continue to reach out to you, what do you do for self-care? And I'll explain. Uh, I'm a certified coach. And when I first started coaching people, I found myself sobbing. I found myself just like falling apart during the coaching session. I'm like, wait a minute, you got to get yourself together. You're supposed to be a resource to help people. So how do you keep your composure and also at the same time you're helpful but you're not taking it into the point where it's making you sick um, I've, i still speak to my mental health team i have my regular visits um i've got as i said i've got an amazing supportive wife um my daughter willow um she's my hero basically she's free and she doesn't realize it she's the one who calms me down who stops me from having these suicidal thoughts everything like that and I kind of don't completely get drawn in um, and get emotional. I get sad about people's stories because there is people worse off than you out there. And I just look at it that at least they're talking to me about it. So they're taking a step. They've done that hardest, hardest bit by admitting they need help. So I kind of look at all that as a positive. Um, but if I do get down, then I'll just write a song or a poem. And when you're channeling your feelings, do you do you feel less angry or do you feel any of the negative emotions that I imagine one would feel? I was raped myself and so sometimes things start to come up for me. But when you're singing that song, do you find that you're releasing some of that toxic negative energy that might even be still suppressed? Um, yeah, um, I'm still... I find it does help, but every day I do have flashbacks. I have flashbacks all the time and it could be little things, you know, I could be out in the street and I could have a complete um, anxiety, stroke, panic attack um, where I'm struggling um, and everything else like that. And it's, what do I, what do I do? You know, and I do find what I need um, through, obviously, as you said, with the music and helping people, and I'm just like, I do have the flashbacks, but I learned to deal with them with coping strategies and knowing that it's not going to be forever because I'm getting the help. Whereas I didn't have the help, but these people um, can get help now and they're making the start by talking to me about it. Um, and as a process of um, opening up, which is very good. Definitely is. And I love what you just shared because I feel like we can stay where we were we can be a victim we can say woe is me or we can figure out what are some tools that i can use so that i can take what happened to me and be an advocate help other people or maybe take that energy and put it into something else and i found with all the interviews that i've done there are many people who have been through terrible things and on the other side they're truly successful from a creative perspective because that negativity that toxic energy has come out through books through poetry through song and so that's exactly what you're doing yeah totally and that's what i plan to do i mean um I'm obviously, hopefully, doing a part with the book, um, Ruby Self. Um, but then I just kind of look at it. I, I used to blame myself and I still blame myself, but I'm starting to learn techniques to say it wasn't me. I'm not the problem. It wasn't my fault. Um, and this is the key part. You need to understand that it's not your fault. You know, you didn't choose to be raped. You didn't choose to live on the streets. It's how circumstances have done it. And as I said, you can either learn from it 
or you can run from it. And I've chosen to learn from it to help people. So absolutely. Thank you. And we're going to get into more about your work, but I do have a question when mm -hmm. as, as someone who has experienced homelessness, we see people who are homeless. I mean, I'm sure wherever you are in the world that you'll see someone who's homeless. Mm -hmm. What would you like us to know as someone who's been homeless? What would you like us to know about what that person is experiencing, how they want to be treated, how the fact that maybe they feel invisible and they'd like to be seen? Yeah, um, it's all changed over the years. Um, I remember when I was sleeping in um, a doorway, you know, I'd have people urinate on me. I'd have people steal my cardboard boxes, um, throw food, um, look down on me. And I see it to this day where you see people on the street who suffer with um, alcoholism, um, drug addiction. And people are so quick to say, oh, that's another alcoholic or that's another drug. But actually, if you took five minutes to speak to them, you'd understand they've all got a story. Like there was a guy who was a chief inspector um I, I can't mention what police force but he come home and people that he arrested years ago burnt down his house and it killed his wife and children he went off the rails and become homeless living on the streets and was turned into alcoholic it doesn't make him a bad person and all we want is people to acknowledge us and realize we aren't bad people we don't choose to be in this situation that we get put in and that's the key part, really, is just if people spent time to talk to us and understand instead of being judgmental, because they, they people who are looking down on you could be the people that are looking up to you in five years time because they need help. It's an excellent point. We never know where we're going to be in life from one minute no. to the next. So, Jamie, I'd like to talk about the fact that you are a role model. You are an inspiration and you are really a celebrity. So tell us about your work as a singer. Wow. OK, so it's not something I I thought I'd ever get into singing. Um, I did it when I worked on holiday parks. Um, but when my son passed away in 2017, um, I wrote a poem, which I read to his funeral. And then a few years later, I thought, what can I do to help other people? Because there isn't that much support for fathers who've lost children. There's loads for women, but there isn't that much for fathers. And I spoke to a charity in the UK called Sands, which is a stillborn near and out of death. And I turned my poem into a song. I recorded it um, in 2022 on my birthday. And then from that, I got signed to K-Dragon Records um, by Gary Knight, who loved the song. And we got it played everywhere. It all got published. And all the money from it went to the Sands charity. Um, so that was called Gone Too Soon, which is on all the platforms. I've just written another one called Until We Meet Again because it's seven years since my son passed away. Um, so that's going to be released. I've got a club anthem, which is totally out of my remit, called Summer Vibes. And then what I've done, a lot of people I talk to, because I use TikTok Live um, to do a lot of my live content, I get a lot of people coming on talking about the mental health, um, the sexual abuse and so And what I've done, I've everyone that I've interacted with, I've told them to give me two lines each and we're making it into a massive charity single to help victims of domestic abuse violence sexual assault and also doing one for mental health as well um so a lot of my music is charity music um other than the summer vibes one so yeah that's truly incredible so you put something on TikTok, and then people who are engaging with you you've asked them to put a couple of sentences and you're including that in into your new release yep um totally and i'm giving them opportunities as well um to star in my feature film survivor that i'm making you know so only little parts but it gives them something to enjoy they can tell their story and it'll be told in a feature film um which will be um, sent it everywhere but also um i was spoken to or i was approached by queen eden trinidad um the queen of the burland state and she's asked me to write a song for their country as their anthem um so i'm recording an anthem for a country as well so yeah it's all 
all really good but i'm inclu including people into my songs and movies because it's a good start for them and it makes them feel good and it helps them um, share positivity wow not everyone can say they're writing a, a song for a country that's amazing i know i know <laughs> congratulations Thank Jamie, you. I have a question for you about how social media has impacted the music industry, for example. And we have a show here called The Film and Music Show, which Dr. Chan will be hosting again. And we've had artists come on and they've said, you know, I'm working two jobs and working three jobs. It's so hard to make money. And they're all talented. Has social media been an asset or a liability in terms of helping artists earn income? I think it's a I think it's a bit of both really now. You know, there's so many ways that somebody can record a song and just upload it to say Spotify um, or YouTube. And it's about attracting your audience. Um, so sometimes you won't get proper, proper artists. And it is so hard. You've got your song's got to capture the right audience at the right time. So you can get the likes and the followers, and that's what we'll build your money in. You know, long on the days of um, I'm going back to cassettes you know or cds and uh, mini discs that's all gone it is all done now online and i think social media has a massive massive part to play on that um and i follow a few people on social media and i see them busking or i see them singing and i'm like wow they are so phenomenal and i end up doing collaborations with them um and then you get them asking how do you get signed to a record label and it but it's a bit of both really it's hard work you know i still do a normal job um as i'm in really you know i've got my humanitarian stuff but it's very hard to make a living ever since you've had the things like x factor and britain's got talent everybody thinks they're it's amazing it'll put you in the doorway but it doesn't my wife went um an audition for x factor i think it was and she, they actually said to her she's too good for the show so they didn't put her through because she's an opera singer um and then other people i know that have been on the show they've won it but yet they've not gone anywhere so it's a bit uh, hit and miss really social media it can work in your favor or it can go against you yeah it's a bit of a dichotomy and something that i'd like to ask you as a follow-up to that we've had a couple of people who have been on here and then i see because we're connected they're on social media putting I deserve to be paid. Don't ask me to perform at your event unless you want to pay me. So what are your thoughts about that? Is there a fine line between where you perform for free and then where you say, listen, that that's it. You have to pay my fee, whatever that is. Yeah. I, I mean, I'll speak it from music and um, as an actor. Um, I go to a lot of charity events. I play celebrity football um, for a charity and you get some people i go to some charity events to meet and greets and there's one particular person she'll charge i'll only do this if you charge me this money then she'll start sending her own jewelry and everything and then she's wanting demand making all these demands and then she's charging people for photos and autographs and i don't charge to do any of that sort of stuff you know like do meet and greets or attend to places because you need your fans to be your promoters you know so if you're going in there saying right i want this 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 when you're starting out or if you think you're amazing i want da, 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 then you're gonna lose reservation very very fast you know um it's only until you get up the likes of like say westlife um carrie underwood um all the big big celebrities then you can start making money but while you're getting in that industry you need to kind of give as well as receive I love that. Yes, that's a great point. Thank you. So for someone who's out there and they have skills, they have talent, they have everything they need, but they don't have any promoters. They don't have an agent. They don't have a long resume. They just have talent. What would you suggest? Should they start singing on social media? Yeah. Um, it's social media is an amazing platform so if you do things like the, the best platform at the moment is TikTok. um if you go in there you'll see loads and loads of singers and it's about networking with their um 
and it's about getting your voice heard and with the acting side of it as well join some extra agencies so working as a background artist which is how i originally started out um 10 years ago and just keep working 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 your way up and then you become a published professional actor um, and the same with a singer um i was lucky to get signed to a record label um but i'm in a position where with the record label if i think someone's really good i can send their music to the record label and then they'll have a look at it but i can also do a collaboration with them so if say joe blogs wanted to sing a duet with me we made a song um an original song we could do that and record it and my record label will release that song because i'm on it so it's about get who you not what you know who you know and being in the right place at the right time but don't give up hope just keep going for it just keep pushing 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 and do the little jobs the little gigs and you'll start getting there and i'm helping so many people at the moment with their music um sharing their music helping them um going through their lyrics for them and seeing what needs changing and editing and how to improve it and i don't charge for none of that because i believe everybody should follow their passion you know absolutely there is definitely a, a fine line and i think to be out there and giving value and mentorship and giving people an opportunity is really important i know that you're with k dragon records and i think oh my gosh when i first started maybe three years ago we had them on a number of people and, and some of their artists what's that experience been like for you to be with k dragon records it's it's been phenomenal um gary knight and the team they can't do enough for you they're constantly updating you with what's going on um they're putting you forward they're letting you know where all the concerts are all the gigs um all the competitions that you can apply to sing on so like you can apply to do a concert um and things like that but it'll always include you they'll get you involved and they share all your music everywhere, all these different radio stations around the world um, on CDs. You make um, EPs. It's, it's just it's just it's just phenomenal. I could go somewhere and hear my music playing and I'm like, is this really happening to me? Is this really surreal? Um, like as an actor side of it as well, if I go in PC world and the kids are with me, they'll go to every single computer and Google my name and bring me up on every single computer in PC world. Um, it, so although I've been doing it for 10 years and the music a few years, it's still not probably sank in um, that I've actually achieved this, um, that ever since a little boy, when my parents called me a drama queen, I never thought I'd actually make a career out of it. And here I am. <laughs> I love the way you came full circle. Tell us about your film Survivor and how can our audience get involved? I know you've already mentioned that you've got some parts that you've given out to people through social media. Are there other opportunities? Yeah, certainly. If um, if if people network um, or send a message, um, like give you their emails, or if they email me, my emails at the bottom of the screen, um, I can get them involved with the film Survivor survivor is a unique film it's been many many years in the making i started filming it and then one of the people um the production team that i had on board lied about their age um, they only turned out to be 17. um but then people that i had with the film were taking the scripts and making their own mini scripts of my film um that's all been dealt with now but survivor is based on a true story about my life growing up and I've got cancelling scenes where everyone's in a group or they're on screen and these people that I'm getting involved um, are actually going to be in the cancelling scenes. Mm -hmm. So um, there's loads of options. I've got about six, seven spaces left um, for supporting mm -hmm. artists or background artists to get involved in. So people can just go to this email address and for people who are listening on an audio platform it's jamie j-a-m-i-e long l-o-n-g x-x-i at outlook.com fantastic mm -hmm. jamie what would you like to share with our audience that i haven't asked you um well i don't i don't know it's a tough one really um oh look my light my light went off sorry about that question 
just don't give up really there isn't really a question um that comes to to mind that i can think of other than you will get knocked back be prepared for that you will get knocked back you will get turned down you might not get the part you might not get what you want but use that as your growing spirit to make you stronger use that negative to keep pushing and make you want it because the amount of times i get knocked back from auditions or stuff or i'm always doubting myself but do you know what just keep pushing it you just got to keep going guys and if if i can help in any way offer any other advice when we're off there um or in a week two weeks later then please email me i will send you all my social media links and i will get you all involved and help with the best way i can um and answer any questions whether it is from an actor singer songwriter or my humanitarian with being a victim and survivor of as i said um rape domestic abuse violence homelessness alcohol um yeah just keep following your dreams and you will achieve your dreams i'm a living proof of it i've gone as i said i've gone from living on the streets to joining the army um getting a degree because people said you won't get a degree mm-hmm. and then i've received three honorary doctorate degrees um diplomas bravery awards i've received so many awards just through my hard work even though i don't deserve them but you can achieve it if i can do it you can do it thank you jamie one final topic i'd like to approach is i think Mm -hmm. many times me myself uh, as well we become so overwhelmed about something that's going on and we can't we can't understand that that's right now That doesn't mean that it's tomorrow or the next day, but yet we get caught into this trap of, I'm never gonna get out of this. I'll never be good enough. I'll never, I'll never, I'll never. But that's at this moment, it's not yet. How do we go from I'll never to not yet? Right, so the way to look at it is, the word everybody uses is impossible. Well let's just take impossible okay if you put a space between the m and the p you've got i'm possible so every time you feel like you're impossible or you're not going to achieve something put that space between the m and the p and it says i'm possible and live for today what happens today is history tomorrow because tomorrow's a new day you know you can as i said dwell on it let it suck you in or you can learn from it and think right what can i do to make it better and look in the mirror and tell yourself i'm possible not impossible i'm possible and if you dream it you can believe it and if you believe it you will achieve it i promise thank you jamie final question i think this is a a good one when we're down when we're out other people Mm -hmm. sometimes love it They won't say anything, but they're like, yeah, he deserved it. She deserved it. And then as you start to come out of it, people are not happy. Oh, no, I liked it when she was failing, when she was fat, when she was sad. And we may have Mm -hmm. to change our circle. We may have to say, bye, sorry, not happening. What can you share about Mm -hmm. that? Well, I used to worry about what people think all the time, and now I don't. And I used to think, oh, they're saying horrible stuff, or they're being nasty, they're being mean. I'd rather have one friend, true friend, than 15 fake friends. But the way I look at life now, if they're being rude to me, if they're being horrible, saying nasty things, that's a bonus for me because I'm being mentioned around the world. People are talking about me, so I'm getting publicized free of charge for doing what I normally do. So if they cause you hatred and they want to talk about Mm -hmm. you or bad mouth you, at least your name's getting out there and you're getting recognized. So use it to your advantage. And that's what I've started doing now. I'm smiling backstage because it's so (laughs) true. I know people have said, yes, say negative things about me because I've arrived. I've made it because you're talking about me. (laughs) They call me fat. Well, I'm a plus size model, so I get paid to be fat. You know, (laughs) who wants a six pack when you can have a 20 top cushion? You know, I make it as a joke, you know, and that's what you do. And they don't like it because you're not rising to their bait. You're using it to your advantage, you know, and that's the key part. Go back to once again, I am possible. And that's all you need to do is I'm possible. Absolutely. I love that. Well, we've come to the end of our program and I really appreciate you being here. I'm going to spotlight you again. Any final words you have for our audience and also who would you like to contact you? Well, 
guys, as I said, everybody flood my inbox. I love I love emails because it stops me from listening to the wife moaning and nagging at me. No, I'm only joking. Um, inbox me. Everybody inbox me. Ask me questions. I love it. I love answering questions for people. I love problem solving. And if I can help and guide you, then I can. But the, all I want to say to you guys is please don't let anything get you down. It's very hard. If you imagine a seed, we plant a seed. Yeah, everybody waters that seed and you start growing. Sometimes it'll die off and the process starts again. But then when it does work, you flourish into a flower. And then once you've got that positive side with you, you'll pass it on to people. So it'll be like the petals falling off the flower and then it'll regrow in, you know. So just use that. Just always find a way, fight away. And there's one key word. If you get an opportunity to say if there's an event or this, don't say, oh, I can't be bothered now or I can't be doing this. That's not it. You need the positivity. And I go back to um, Lady Ambassador, Dr. Robbie Motter. And her word is show up. Because I showed up at the Loney event in the Philippines. I've got my own Loney project. I've received these awards. I've been um, appointed a chairperson. Um, for men's and human rights. Um, I've received loads of awards from it just from showing up. And I weren't going to show up because of my mental health. I was like, no, it's not going to happen, even up onto the plane. But you know what? The best thing I did, and I'd rather take a knockback to make me stronger than miss out on losing an opportunity of a lifetime by showing up. But anything, just message me, guys. Thank you so much, Jamie. It's been an honor and a pleasure to have you here. I look forward to your continued success and growth and hope that you'll come back and see us again soon. Oh, I look forward to it. I look forward to it. I can't wait to come back again. All right. Hopefully I won't you. leave it two years next time. No, let's have it <laughs> next month. Let's leave. Let's not wait that long. So, <laughs> yeah, things are happening all the time. So, yeah, I might be doing regular. Um, yeah, come back talk. and see us on this show, on the film and music show. The wise ones, we have a number of shows. We'd love to have you back. Yep, no, it'd be an honor. And thank you so much to you and your team for having me tonight. Or, yeah, tonight in the UK. So Yeah, we're getting towards tonight here as well. So have a pleasant night's sleep, and we'll see you again soon. And you, thank you very much. Take thank care. You. Take care, everyone. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. Thank you, everyone. Please do reach out to Jamie. We're putting his contact information here again. And also for the people on our audio only platforms, it's his name, Jamie Long, J-A-M-I-E-L-O-N-G-X-X-I at Outlook.com. If you'd like to be a guest on this or any of our other shows, please go to our website, usaglobaltv.com. Go to the book, Your Session selection and then just scroll down find a show that really resonates with you and go ahead and book in please do go over to roku and download our app which is usa global tv go to amazon fire download our app which is usa global tv and go to our youtube channel which is guess what usa global tv we look forward to seeing you again on another program soon thank you so much bye for now The last few days have been really amazing. I uh, had the trainer trainer course from uh, the British School of Etiquette. And I must say it's been one of the best decisions I've ever made and one of the best investments I've made in, in my own training and development. Now words alone will not describe the transformation and the positive path that I have travelled with the British School of Etiquette. I find really I, I learned a lot from the lessons this time I came. The last few days with the British School of Etiquette have been fantastic. And what I've learned now is really beyond my expectations. This is the most rewarding experience and the best investment I have made this year. It was just great. I learned so much and when I go back to Belgium I will incorporate a lot of it uh, into um, my day-to-day -day life and business. It's been absolutely wonderful for the whole week that we were here. I feel transformed and I feel like blowing a trumpet and tell people come and do this school. This class is the best. This is the best school ever. Uh, you should take it. It's just, it will change your life immediately. I am now able to teach 
other people how to bring the best of them. Thank you. Thank you, PSD. Thank you. Thank you so much. <laughs>